teacher did a lot of the experiments and showed us a lot of stuff instead of us doing it. We were just told how you do it and what it's like to do it, but we didn't actually experience it. The teacher would just stand there and tell you stuff and then you'd have to write it down. We just were really bored and it just wasn't fun at all. It goes in one ear and out the other because you haven't actually done it. Eighteen months ago, Skyswood Primary School in St Albans discovered girls just weren't enjoying science. Head teacher Bob Bridal explains. As a school, we always do annual questionnaires and the pupil questionnaires, it was clear from them that science, um, unlike any other subject, there was this difference between girls and boys. And, you know, nearly 70% of the boys were saying they love science and less than 30% of the girls. So, of course, that alarmed us. Science coordinator um, went into classes, really, to audit practice in science and see um, what it was that the girls weren't enjoying. And we, we found out that there wasn't one, one identified area. There are a number of issues, really. We're going to pair you up with the reception children and we're going to take you out into the environmental garden. And I want you, with your partner, to look at the types of places where you might find mini beasts. The audit discovered that, as well as girls finding certain topics boring, there was a culture of aversion towards risk-taking among them, a quality that's essential in science. They wanted things to be right, a correct answer, and, of course, in investigative science, um, questioning is important and I want um, to develop an ethos here where children feel it's fine to make mistakes and actually some of the most powerful learning comes through getting something wrong and, and having another go. And the other area was some of the quieter girls I think were finding it difficult to fulfil their potential in group situations. They weren't really contributing as much as we felt they could. To try and turn around the girls' attitude to science, the school introduced a number of concepts, including more visits out and more science-related visitors in. One innovative idea was class pairing in core subjects. Taking the idea from buddy reading, the school decided to pair up older and younger classes in science, a concept that not only ensures older pupils really understand the subject in order to model to their young peers, but particularly appeals to girls, and it's working really well. Okay then, so what sort of um, beasts do you think you're going to find in this place? Because this is what sorts of beasts we live here. I um, don't remember. Maybe some ants, because that they like the soil. Habitat? Mm. I just saw a frog. Another area within the school was looking at self-evaluation and going back to this idea that some children find it quite difficult um, to accept that, you know, you can make mistakes. Um, throughout the school, we, we've looked at self-evaluation and tried to develop strategies where we encourage children to have a go and that if they make a mistake, that's no big deal. There's quite a few with blue heads. Marika, what do you think lives in the water? Look, a frog. Look, lovely. Your frogs could live in that. Wow. His frogs like water, don't they? Well, they like swimming. Their frogs like swimming. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Do you like swimming? Should we give it back to Alex yeah. now? I found another slug. Look, Oliver. And oh, I look. found a, a little bug and I found um, another lizard. Look, Oliver, look. What's that? A wood louse. You know the skeleton? It's on the outside, which makes a big shell so they don't get hurt. So, like, we have our skeleton on the inside, and they have theirs on the outside, so they don't get hurt. That's clever. It's quite clever, isn't it? And they can roll up into a ball to get into trouble. Mm. Oh, Do you know how many legs an ant has? No. Three on each side, so it's got six legs together. I think pairing up with other classes does help because, especially for the younger children, because they're learning from us instead of learning from a teacher, which sometimes can be a bit intimidating, whilst it also helps because you're teaching someone else and you've got to really understand what you're saying and not saying something that's not true. It's never you slimy. Yeah. Look. It's leaving a trail on you. Yeah. A trail. 
for slime. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, Jesse. It was very small and agile, isn't it? Slow. Today, the children have actually seen newts and frogs, which we haven't seen in the past. Um, the descriptive language that's coming out from the children, not just the year sixes that are modelling the language to the uh, reception children, but they're actually taking on board the language as well. Um, it's been fantastic. I found two frogs and another frog. To truly enable the practical science that the girls wanted to take place, the school also developed an environmental area from an unused patch of land. When I first came here as a head three years ago, it was very overgrown and some parents were really keen to do something with this area. We found that BBC Breathing Places Award, we, we could actually put in an application. The school council worked really hard on that. And the children were wonderfully proud when they won £10,000. And that was really a starting point for us. He's cute, isn't he? It's a new one. I put him back in his hole back here and he's had a very busy day. That's his hole, that's a new yeah. hole. Oh, like the birds might eat some seeds. And then when they go to the toilet, they would drop. They might drop into like soil in here. And then they could, like, when they're in there, they germinate, which is another word for grow, into bigger seeds. Some could be bad, like there could be weeds or something. Like a part of an egg. Yeah. Or there could be some sort of plant. Well, see the half of the egg. There. Yeah. I think that's just a stone. It looks like an egg. Oh, well, see. The girls' attitudes have certainly changed um, and we've bridged that gap between boys and girls. We've now got 80% of children saying they think science is fantastic. Um, interestingly, boys are still slightly more positive than the girls, but it's less than 5%. So we've really narrowed that gap. My favourite thing in science is light. Mine's probably the healthy eating. I would say doing experiments. Doing the experiments on dissolving. Probably um, like plants and life because it's really interesting how things can like reproduce and like make live. This afternoon, Year 6 are doing an experiment that relies on them recalling their learning from the last few months. It's hands-on involves group work and ticks all the boxes that the school identified as appealing to girls. I can see you've all been having a sneaky look in your jars on your table. It's going to be your job this afternoon to try and separate them. Now here's the scenario that you've been approached by the manager of a sweet factory and he has a problem that he thinks that you'll be able to, to solve. The floor of the factory gets coated every day with a layer of sweet crumbs, iron filings from all the machines, sawdust and sand. Now all the sweepings at the moment just get thrown into the rubbish bin. Is there any way that the sweet crumbs can be saved? <coughs> well we need the magnet to get out the iron filings. One of the interesting things that came out from addressing the issue with girls' attitude towards science is that the steps taken actually apply for both boys and girls rather than stereotyping it. And I think the, the issues involved making science that little bit more exciting in certain areas, making sure that all children um, had a role in group work. So I mean, every school is different and, and they need to look at their own context. But, but for our school, in raising attainment for girls, I think it addressed the issues of keeping that balance. The girls have closed the gap, but the boys are still loving science even more than they did two years ago. Finding out um, how different things work and the 
but not everything can be right. So we just have to try, if something doesn't go right, we just have to try something else. Why don't we put, it put everything in, in water <laughs> and put the magnet at the bottom? Do you think that might work? Let's see if I do that. The magnet's on the sweet spot. Then let's size shape them. Yeah, I think we're going to have to put the magnet. What's going to be? See what's in there. See what's in there. Yeah. In terms of um, science in the school now, I think you, you'd be hard pushed to find a primary school that doesn't take a really investigative approach in primary schools. I think we've got lots to be proud of in this country about primary science, but we, we feel that the steps we've made um, are taking science to another level, making science really inspiring. For example, in the topics where the children weren't that motivated, we, we had a fresh look at how we were delivering those topics. No, we'll probably still stick to that formally. And then we'll I think the important thing is firstly for schools to identify exactly where there are issues and as we did with our science coordinator, go in and work with teachers and, and talk to girls, interview girls, find out what it is they like, find out what it is they're not so keen on. So once you've identified the issues, then working on a plan really to address those areas. And, and we worked very closely as a school, but we also involved the local secondary schools and we had science specialists come in and work alongside us um, and, and keep a dialogue going with the children. Well done, Year 6. Really impressed with your thinking this afternoon. Can you explain how it's worked over here? You have managed to separate out every single item. So, number one, what did you do first? Sift out the sand and the iron fillings. Um, and then we used the magnet to get out all the iron, sawdust and the boiled sweets into warm water. With a spoon we got all the sawdust out and then we dissolved, made the sweets so they dissolve and stirred them round and then going to evaporate off the water so we're just left with the sweets. Okay, fantastic, well done. And who better to sum up their attitude to science now than Skyswood's girls? I have noticed a change in the attitude because I think girls realise that it's not just about digging around in soil and listening to teachers talk, it's about doing stuff and proving things to each other. They're fun and I like the practical kind of things that we do. The girls do like being a bit more adventurous in science. I really like the environmental garden because we um, can come out and look at how things grow and like we can see like bees pollinating it in the summer. We could actually help the younger ones. It's nice to know what they'd be up to and what we could do to help them improve their science. I think girls are braver in science because before um, you just don't, can't they think you can't make a mistake because well then you're failed but you don't f fail in science because you learn from your mistakes and it's better than learning from your mistakes than just getting everything right all the time and not learning what could have happened and how you could resolve it.